Yesterday, I made a video about these two batteries and we made example systems for a budget system, if you don't have much money, and then a performance system, like best of the best. And I was looking at these two batteries and these lead times are very, very popular. But for a little bit more money, it's a few hundred dollars, I think it's worth it to buy the Epic. So today I'm gonna just show you the two batteries side by side and I wanna hear what you guys have to say. We're also gonna have a poll in the community section to see is it really worth it to spend the extra money. So we're gonna rip them apart, put them side by side and I wanna hear what you guys have to say. Would you spend the extra money for this or no? Would you just go for the cheapest battery on the market every single time? First, the price. On the left, the lead time costs $1,500. And then on the right, Right? The Epic is $2,000. So this one costs 25% more. And if you buy multiple batteries, that's a substantial savings to go with the lead time. Next, the BMS, the lead time can output 250 amps and you can charge with 250 amps. And the max discharge is 500 amps for five seconds. Now the Epic, the max discharge rate is 300 amps. The maximum continuous charge is 230 amps, but maximum discharge is 500 amps for 30 seconds. Now the cycle life is interesting, get this. At an 80% depth of discharge, the Epic is rated for 3,500 cycles, but the lead time is rated for 6,000 cycles at 80% depth of discharge as well. But the Epic battery has an 11 year warranty and the lead time only has a five year warranty. Now, even though they have the same capacity, this one is 97 pounds and this one is 86 pounds. So for the money, the lead time is looking pretty good, especially the charge cycle life. Now let's compare the cases, everything on the outside of the battery. Now this case is very boring. Pretty much every relabeled Chinese lithium iron phosphate battery has the same case. There's no screen, there's no buttons, it's just two terminals on the top of the battery. But they work, there's nothing wrong with these, and it is nice to have a simple battery. You have nothing that can possibly leak. This is a watertight battery. Now the case on the Epic battery is so nice. One of my favorite in the market, especially for 12 volts. They also have the stainless steel inserts, so you can bolt this down with some L brackets, and they sell those separately. But unfortunately, it's only on the front and the back. They don't have them on the sides or anywhere else. There are some batteries on the market that if you put them side by side, you can bolt them together. And that is really nice. I really think they need to add it to this battery as well. The tops of the batteries are completely different. The lead time, just some terminals. This one, you have an on and off switch, Bluetooth indicator light, a waterproof DIP switches for communication protocol and some other stuff. I forgot what this is called, but it releases the moisture if it accumulates over time. We also have this metal piece on top with their name on it, and this is a heat sink for the BMS. And again, all of this is waterproof. And then you have these plugs over here for Victron communication and also for the shunt. And this comes with the shunt, this one does not. I think it's over here. Yep, here it is. And all of these wires are waterproof and glued. And this is a state of charge indicator with the coulomb meter built into the BMS. This is not voltage dependent. This tells you how much capacity you actually have. And for some of you guys, this will save a couple hundred dollars. If you were planning to buy a really nice shunt, you can just use this instead if all you need is the capacity. Now, if you want more features and you want the full Victron ecosystem, I recommend buying the Victron shunt but it's gonna cost quite a bit more money. And this cable connects to a Victron inverter and it has the communication protocol built in. You just have to plug it in and that's it. The lead time has none of this. You have to spend more money on a shunt if, if you want that feature and you're not gonna have battery communication at all. Next, the Epic battery is slightly taller than the lead time, but the lead time is more wide. And so that means that the Epic battery will have less of a footprint if you're mounting them on the ground. So they're about the same volume, but this one has less of a footprint. And I think they should do that with the lead times. Like, why not? Oh boy, that was easy. First, let's look at the lead time. So very typical budget lithium iron phosphate. We've got some cells with some foam and we've got a BMS. And the BMS is held in place with some zip ties. And you have some fiber board separating the cells from the BMS. And then we have some double-sided something that separates these cells. And it does work, and a lot of people like these, and the quality control is really good on the lead times, but it's pretty much a box 
with some cells and a BMS, and that's pretty much it. And with this model, there's no low tip charging protection, so you have to add that separately. You can do that with a Victron Solar Charge Controller, but it does cost more money. So these batteries have to be in a warm environment no matter what, unless you add that feature. Now, usually with budget batteries, the cells do not fail, but the BMS does. And Lead Time makes their own BMS, and these are amazing. Even though they're very simple and they lack features, you shouldn't have any issue with these. And all of their connections and the lock nuts that they use, everything's glued down. It is a pretty good build, especially for the price. Now this is beautiful. Now the difference is crazy. Like even the BMS, it has a conformal coating. Look at these massive copper bus bars. On the lead time, it was just a bunch of bundled up wires. Also, it has its own T-class fuse and you're never gonna find that in a budget battery. And these are fantastic for safety and these cost a lot of money. Just the cost savings alone for this is substantial, especially if you buy multiple batteries. But I'm not sure if they offer replacements on their website, so we need to check that out. Next, look at the terminal and compare that to the lead time. On the lead time, it's just some wires connected to the stud. And this is as simple and as cheap as it gets. Like this, compared to the Epic Terminal, it's just totally different. And everything is so freaking solid, even the BMS attached to the board. Instead of having it held with zip ties, this is designed for this battery and everything is screwed down. Everything here is designed to work together for this battery. It's not just some cells in a BMS slapped into a box. Next, these cells have heaters. If it gets cold, it will heat itself up. Also, it has low tip charging protection, so you don't have to buy that as well. Next, all of the plugs are potted, and these connectors are automotive grade. And overall, I think it has every feature a lithium iron phosphate battery should have. All of the safety features, communication, everything else, this battery has it. Now, it's hard to see, but the cells are held in place with a metal frame, and there's foam between the frame and the cells. But now I wanna hear your opinion. Which one would you spend your money on? If you're gonna use this battery for 10 or 20 years, would you rather have this, or would you ha rather have this? Do you think it's worth it to spend 25% more to buy one of these instead? Now, even though this one is lacking features, it has a good track record. They've been around longer than Epic batteries, and a lot of people are happy with these batteries, especially for the price. They cost the same as a server rack battery, but again, the server rack battery has communication, like six temperature sensors, a state of charge meter, and all of that. This doesn't have any of that, so it's good for 12 volts compared to other budget batteries, but for the money, I think you can do better, especially for 48 volts. But for 12 volts and handling all that current, this is probably the best bang for your buck with all of the features included. Instead of having a shunt and a T-class fuse and all that other stuff you have to buy, this has it built in. Also, it has heaters. This doesn't have that. This also have lo low tip charging protection. This one doesn't have that either. So all those little things that you have to spend money on, which some of you guys, you might not need any of those features. But for some of you, if you're actually using this stuff outdoors and you want it to last for a long time, I would absolutely go with this instead. The big selling point on this though, on the spec sheet is this thing's rated for like 6,000 cycles to 80%, which is pretty crazy. Why is this one only rated for 3,500 cycles? I mean, as long as it's lithium iron phosphate and you're cycling it with solar at low C rates, you're not gonna have an issue. These batteries will probably die after you die. But that's a substantial difference. We should figure out the, what cells they're actually using. That's crazy. Now I wanna hear your opinion. What would you buy? Do you think it's worth the extra money to buy the Epic battery? Or do most of you guys fall in the camp of, I don't need those features and I just want the cheapest one possible? I would love to hear what you guys have to say below. And that's pretty much it just a quick comparison video and i want to hear your opinion i'll also have a poll in the community section if you're interested but yeah thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video bye